comes from the book of Luke 23, verse 46. And our own brother Harlan Tehran Jr. will bring to us the last and final word from the cross. Uh, before I begin, it's just an honor to be able to stand with you guys. You guys set an awesome stage uh, for the word of God to just keep on flying. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you. God bless you. Luke 23, 46, New King James Version. And when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands. Say hands. Hands. Say hands. Hands. I commit my spirit. Happy. I got it. <laughs> Amen. Family, I love it. I love it. Having said this, he breathed his last. And uh, as a person who spends most of my time trying to break down meaty biblical topics and into bite-sized morsels for children to digest. I'm a youth director here. I do children's church as well. I tend to come to studies and texts and verses with a childlike perspective. And the thing that immediately jumped out to me after having read this text, and don't judge me, I'm just a human being, is that God doesn't have hands. God doesn't have hands. And that childlike finding spiraled me into a fun little dive into what and where Jesus was committing his spirit to. Let's pray, Father. Uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In my studies, I found out that when God has attributed human characteristics, uh, it is called anthropomorphism. And don't ask me to say it again. We know <laughs> that God is an all-powerful spirit, and if he actually had hands, it would substantially limit some of his godlike character. Yes. The hands that Jesus committed his spirit to it couldn't be like my hands. It couldn't be like your hands, Harlan's hands. Because my hands are prone to fatigue, limited in size, marked up. My fingers are stubby, right? I'm clumsy at times. Uh, the other day, I uh, had a box of french fries and I dropped them on the floor. And when I went to pick them up, I dropped them again. Like, what am I doing here, right? The hands that Jesus committed his spirit to, the hands that Jesus presented his spirit for approval and acceptance, the hands that would care for Jesus' spirit had to be special. Those hands needed to be both powerful and gentle. And I think the pottery of the claim injury is appropriate here if we turn in our Bibles to Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6, and I'll read it quickly. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's shop. I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out the way he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay and started over. Then the Lord gave me this message, O oh, Israel, can I not do to you as the potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand. What we can believe from this is the power of the potter to create and the power of the potter to destroy. Yes. We also observe the precise margin of error that exists in creation. A gentle pinch here or a subtle angling of a finger in a direction uh, correlates to the creative piece. These detailed parts of us aren't accidents. They are details created by the anthropomorphic hands of Almighty God. So I think we're in a good spot, right? We know God doesn't have hands, but that imagery that we just read shows his power and his gentleness. But Jesus had hands. And Jesus says in John 14, 9, 14, 9, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus is the word made flesh who dwelt among us. So what else can we glean about the hands of Jesus, uh, the hands Jesus committed his spirit to by looking at the begotten son? Even before Jesus began his ministry, he used his hands as a carpenter. And anyone who's ever done any woodworking knows that you have a sense of creativity when it comes to working with wood. So creativity is one. Once his ministry began, we see Jesus using his hands for many things. In Matthew 14, Jesus feeds 5,000 people with five loaves of fish, I'm sorry, five loaves of bread and two fish. Looking up to the heavens, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And there are 12 basketfuls left over. Multiplication. And Jesus, uh, in Matthew uh, 9, Jesus heals blind, two blind men. He said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it done to you, healing in the hands of God. 
Another example of healing is when the temple guards came to arrest Jesus. The high priest's ear gets his ear cut off by the disciples, and Jesus touched the man's ear and healed him. So even as he was being betrayed in the hands of the captors, Jesus was still living his mission. Let's take a quick look at the hands of those that the hands of those individuals that were arresting him. They were not powerful. The Bible tells us that they didn't take Jesus' life that he laid it down. They were not gentle. They came with swords and clubs to arrest him. There was no creativity like the carpenter. There was no healing like the healing Jesus. There was no ability to multiply. They came to destroy. Those were not the hands that Jesus committed his spirit to. These hands pushed the crown of thorns on his head. These hands whipped and, and ripped his skin from his body. These hands punched him. These hands held hammers and nails in their hands and nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the cross. These hands gave him something sour to drink. These hands shoved the spirit aside. Jesus didn't deserve this. He didn't put himself in a position to have bad things happen to him. He was being persecuted. And sometimes we go through hard times and we think it's persecution, but sometimes we just make bad decisions. And it's not the haters, it's me. Moving to another city is not going to fix it because the common factor of when things get messed up, it's not the location, it's not the people, it's still just me. So I need to put my life, my situation, my marriage, my finances, my children, my job, my family into the powerful, gentle, creative, healing, multiplying hands of all my life. Because whatever we place in God's hands, He takes care of. Whatever we hold on to or use selfishly is subject to the fragility of human hands. So what are you holding on to that is holding you back? Uh, that is pushing you in the wrong direction that isn't healthy for you? Give that thing up and get into the same hands that Jesus committed to his spirit. I think that uh, this act may have inspired a, an old familiar hymn uh, you might recognize the chorus, but here's the verse. Uh, when your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home and glory, your enraptured soul will view. The chorus goes, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Our verse, and when G Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, it's your hands. I commit 